thank you Bhavav and thank you Ashok for giving me this opportunity uh, to present uh, on this uh, on the modeling of uh, solid liquid phase change uh, which I will uh, present from the perspective of analytical as well as numerical approach. So this will be more or less fundamental uh, towards numerical all numerical schemes basically. Okay, so uh, this uh, this phase change problem, especially from solid to liquid, actually started uh, in 1890 when uh, uh, Josh, uh, Professor Stephen actually he did uh, some analysis on this solid liquid phase change. Now, now the if you see the interesting part is that when you uh, due to this global warming, this some of this uh, ice is actually melting into what uh, water. Okay, and we want to actually investigate how the ice is melting, means how fast this ice is melting and how long it will take to melt completely. So in order to do that, the, the Stephen actually uh, developed the model uh, which was actually the analytical model. And first I will present that, then I will go into the numerical schemes and I, we will try to understand where are the problems do you means uh, handling new analytically okay so if i see the phase change uh, based uh, phenomena uh, please consider any means one material which actually changes uh, state from solid to liquid i am not considering from liquid to gas here i am only concentrating on solid to uh, liquid or liquid to solid so that type of material is called phase change material so one common material is paraffin and all hydrocarbons are mostly are uh, phase change based material. Even molten salts are also a phase change based material. So uh, this is from our uh, seventh standard or eighth standard understanding that if you hit that material, so this uh, temperature of that material will go up and it will re re reach to its uh, melting temperature. Then it will start uh, absorbing heat as latent heat. Then once it's melting, melting completes, then again it will rise. This is the process basically. So our intention means when we actually apply this phase change material in some applications, we try to be, try to contain within this period, within this period. Because after melting, we, this phase change material will, means we, there will be no use of these materials. So the typical applications are spacecraft and avionics thermal control, especially in electronics equipment, uh, thermal management, as well as nowadays heavily it is used in uh, thermal storage uh, applications. Uh, however, very recently I was reviewing some papers, they also applied in uh, like battery uh, thermal management also for uh, racing cars. So what causes the formation of solid uh, from liquid or vice versa. So if we see from the thermodynamics point of view, when phase change occur, actually the means equilibrium has to prevail. So equilibrium means if thermal equilibrium has to be there, mechanical equilibrium has to be there, as well as chemical or phase equilibrium also there. This is for pure material. However, if uh, there is a combination of different material means if you know the concentration of different materials then one more uh, chemical uh, potential will al also come into picture. So at this uh, during this phase change this uh, temperature uh, of melting of liquid say has to be same as the temperature melting of solid okay. So similarly pressure has to be same for both phases and gives free energy has to be same for both phases for pure material. Now first we will start with this one dimensional uh, uh, problem which is famously known as Stephen problem and uh, basically this uh, problem is basically a conduction based model. Uh, however, uh, the, to model this phase change they incorporate this interface heat balance and then they use uh, different techniques uh, to solve that equation. So for example, if I take the solidification process of this pure material, because uh, I will show you impure material also. Uh, so uh, it is basically changing phase from solid to liquid or liquid to solid, uh, whatever you can take. So this is the uh, basic equation what we used to uh, write to describe this phase change. This is basically a conduction based equation where this is basically the uh, uh, diffusion term and this is basically the transient term. And the, this is the equation which is actually takes care of the uh, 
uh, phase change phenomena or it is basically heat balance at this interface if you, say, if you see. So this is basically the heat flux coming from the solid, heat flux coming from the liquid, the net balance has to be equal to the latent heat of fusion into the, uh, uh, the speed with which this interface moves. Okay. So, if I see that how this uh, heat flux actually varies, basically in solid there will be a temperature if you can take this as uh, temperature unit. So, it will actually vary uh, during solid phase in the solid phase and when phase change occur it will be stabilized and again it will rise. So, this phenomena actually this actually depicting this phenomena. So, now I, that means using the semi infinite based medium we actually solve this uh, equation actually Stephen solved this equation and you can analytically get this uh, solution based on this error function only you will give get that interface location in the, the interface location in this form which is not easy to solve unless you employ some uh, numerical methods uh, so it is basically a semi numerical methods you can say if you use Newton method then you can come up with the movement of this interface in this form however uh, one biggest problem of this case is that uh, this analytical solution exists for only uh, few problems so you need to go for the numerical solution and when you go for the numerical solution so three uh, well famous schemes are available which is basically finite difference method finite volume method or finite element method you, you have to employ to discretize the equations so basically what we will try to do is that we will uh, transfer that partial differential equation to a algebraic equation and then we will use these methods I mean say, to solve those equations basically. So now what are the alternate numerical schemes? So there are two types of schemes actually. So broadly it is categorized as moving grid method as well as fixed grid method. So moving grid what Stephen actually did. Okay, so you have to move the grid along with this interface to track the interface. And one of the biggest uh, problem in that method is that uh, the temperature is discontinuous at that interface. So you have to uh, come and say the left hand side or right hand side will be temp uh, solid temperature and the right hand side will be the liquid temperature. So there will be a big discontinuity. So in order to handle that, so people have proposed first fixed grid method under which the three famous actually uh, 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 techniques are available which is based on one, uh, one, dimen one domain uh, method. Basically the uh, equations will be written a for single uh, domain approach. Whereas for multiple domain approach, you can apply phase field method, level set method or volume of fluid method. And other two methods are also there which is meshless methods or lattice Boltzmann met method. However, here I will concentrate only on this uh, single uh, domain methods uh, and the most famous is the ent uh, enthalpy porosity technique and second one is the apparent heat capacity method. However, when you have uh, means uh, people actually these methods people used to use in uh, liquid to uh, gas uh, transformation not uh, from solid to liquid but nowadays uh, people are trying to implement this level set method for this liquid to solid phase change. So basically there is still there is huge I mean, numerical issues involved with this technique so that's why there is, uh, so there is a scope to improve these methods also. And another important thing in fixed grid method is that uh, it explicitly tracks the male front. Whereas in Stephen problem or moving grid method, uh, the male front is, tra is tracked uh, uh, explicitly. Now basic equation is this, basically what you have to do, what I have shown before, this, uh, this equation, this equation is written in this form. written in this form using this definition. Basically, you, the, uh, this equation actually tells, uh, is converted to the enthalpy equation. So from the, in, uh, from the temperature equation, temperature equation basically how you have uh, converted to the enthalpy equation, it is basically H is basically equal to Cp into T. 
and then you substitute in your main equation and you will get this equation. Now what is the advantage of this enthalpy method? Basically here you are not actually tracking the temperature, rather you are tracking the enthalpy of the system and when the phase change occur, this latent heat will also you will calculate through enthalpy. So this is actually the simple model, so they have what they have, they have used is that they have written the uh, relation for relation between this phi and theta which is dimensionalized in this fashion. Basically when uh, the material is in solid phase, the energy content in that material is nothing but Cp into T. But when it is in liquid, it is basically Cp into T melt means where it is melting plus lambda means here lambda is basically the latent heat of fusion. So that is the energy content in the liquid. Okay, plus the Cp into Tm if melting is at occurring at fixed temperature plus here one more term will add Cp into Tm minus T or T minus Tm basically the temperature uh, the T is the temperature of the liquid basically what I am trying to say. Now at the interface when it is the enthalpy will be calculated as Cp into Tm, Tm is the melting temperature plus the amount it melts, it, uh, it is melted basically in the sense the liquid fraction into the latent heat of fusion. This is the way we used to express. Now you can have direct combination like this, the relation between th means that non-dimensionalized num uh, temperature, pro temperature parameter and the non-dimensionalized enthalpy parameter, uh, you can correlate in this fashion and using the finite volume method you can discretize the equation in this form. Now this equation actually can be solved uh, by hand uh, for one dimensional case. Okay. So if you solve then you will get some this type of profile for f during the phase change. Okay. This is you supposed to get a smooth function, okay, smooth line. Whereas if you use, use that me this method then you will get a wavy solution basically what you used to call. This is the, uh, uh, the, the location of the melt front. Okay, you can mention, however, means as the uh, male front actually is wavy or its position is wavy rather I should say. Uh, so people now try to improve this method by introducing some other technique, okay, or improving this technique. So what is that? We, I used to call it advanced uh, enthalpy technique, however in uh, literature it is basically enthalpy porosity technique they used to tell. So what they used to do is that they... Uh, write the, this is the fundamental equation where H is written as Cp into T and this H is again divided into two parts, H small h plus the delta H where this small h is nothing but the sensible heat which is again Cp into T and where is delta H is nothing but the latent heat content. Okay, now if you just rearrange this, if you substitute this and in the main equation and rearrange it, then you will be getting this final version, where this is basically a term which will take care of the phase change uh, from the energy perspective. So momentum I haven't shown here. Okay, now this term is zero during solid and during liquid, this will be this rho into L, means full latent heat will be there. However, during phase change, this term will have some value ranging from 0 to later, full latent heat basically value. Okay. Now as I showed you that how the enthalpy varies uh, over from uh, solid to liquid, the same curve I have plotted here and then in order to find now what will be this value during phase change, what we have to do is that we have to again take this equation, the basic equation and then we have to use finite volume method or finite difference method, whatever method uh, you are applying. Then if you do some calculation, then you can show that at, during phase change at the new time step, you can say will be equal to the old time step value plus some enth sensible enthalpy is minus some uh, function which which is a basically or some parameter which is a function of that uh, the, the melting temperature. Okay, so for pure material this delta HP, this function will be nothing but Tm basically if you can see. So now you employ that this equation along with this equation to actually model the phase change in our advanced enthalpy method. Now 
coming to our continuity, means if you means employ this uh, fluid flow in the model, then continuity and momentum has to be solved. Now, the momentum is traditionally, except this term, except this term is basically an ABS Stokes equation. Only this term is added to take care of the phase change. Now, I will describe how to model this, uh, uh, this, this, uh, this uh, SI uh, using this uh, enthalpy method or any other method. So, there are three kinds of methods available. First, we have to understand that momentum, when we solve the momentum, you will be getting the velocity in the domain. Okay. Now, velocity is zero in the solid phase. However, this velocity, some finite velocity will come in the liquid phase. Okay. And during phase change, this velocity will, value will be from zero to some finite value. So, you have to actually have a range from zero to some value, finite value. So, how to model that? There are now three methods which are available to do that. One is switch, switch off method. Basically, you, have, you just switch off U in the solid domain. You set U equal to zero. Another method is called source term method, which I will describe. And third method is called variable viscosity method. Now, if you just see, if you just put very high viscosity here for the solid phase, then you can actually, finally, you will see that this equation will vanish in the solid phase. So, that is one way of switching off the velocity. However, uh, people found that source based term is very good to actually set the velocity zero in the solid phase as well as having some finite velocity in the liquid phase. So, they adopted this. So, what is that? So, they actually write this source term in terms of some constant into the velocities. Okay, these are u, v, w are the velocities in x, y direction. Now, x, a is nothing but uh, the uh, is written in terms of the morphological constant minus some uh, minus the liquid fraction and this b is basically taken uh, taken into account to uh, having or uh, to avoid the instability in the model so if f say f l equal to 1 then you will see uh, that this model means uh, this a equal to will be zero okay one means uh, FL equal to 1 uh, in the sense means you have a liquid fraction equal to 1. Okay. So, you have then you will get a, uh, a equal to 0 means you will have basically a full fledged Navier Stokes equation which will be solved for liquid phase. But if you see FL equal to 0 which is in the solid phase, then if 0 is there, then it will be undefined. So, in order to avoid that, that B has come into picture. Okay, so, this method is more, more efficient to handle the thing. Now, this C value actually a uh, big thing in the sense that C can take any value. Like here, I have noted one value 10 to the power 8, but what people found that uh, it can be 10 to the power 5, 10 to the power 6, 10 to the power 7, but it depends on the experiments. Okay, so people showed that uh, uh, if 10 to the power 7, if you take the rise of temperature will be uh, slowly, you can say. Whereas, if you take 10 to the power 5 low value, the rise of temperature will be fast. However, again, I am, I, what I try to mean is that this A, C value has to come from your experiment so that it matches well with that uh, uh, experimental study. Now, in, now, once we develop the model of in, uh, model from enthalpy uh, uh, based uh, technique, so what is there is that we have to validate that model. So, what people have done is that they have actually taken some enclosure and within that they have filled, they have put some phase change material of dry, dry content and they try to see how the melting is occurring. So, they saw that some bulge is coming. This is liquid actually. Black one is showing the liquid. So, some bulge will come at the top and then as it progresses, the full container, uh, the, the container will be filled with the liquid. So, one striking thing is this bulge -ness, okay, in the melt font in, at the upper side. Okay, so that has to be replicated. Okay, so so using this method, people showed that okay, our method can be uh, reasonably uh, used to predict the uh, uh, velocity profile in the uh, melt, basically. 
Now, another method is very much popular, is which is called the apparent heat capacity method. And this method is very easy to implement. Where what they do, they don't change anything. Only they actually manipulate this CP value, means specific heat value. So during this uh, solid, they take the specific heat of solid, and during the liquid, uh, during the liquid phase or the, in the liquid phase, they take the CP value as CPL or means a liquid uh, specific heat. However, during the phase change, what they do, they incorporate the latent heat in this form, basically. So they actually plot means a latent heat, latent heat uh, with a function of temperature and if you and they then take that melting is occurring over some temperature difference, they specify it as T solidus and T liquidus or solidus temperature and liquidus temperature and they actually calculate in this fashion, this final CP. Now this method is very popular because of its simplicity as well as uh, 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 as well as implementation in the code, well, simply you can implement in the code. Okay. However, this method has drawback one, that for pure material you means which one has T solid as equal to T liquid as, as, as T melt, means single melting temperature, this model will not work very well. In the sense, unless you put some delta T, you will not be getting this new CP value. Okay, so from that perspective, what the third method has been had, had been developed, which is called the uh, temperature transformation model. So it takes the advantage of enthalpy method, where, as well as it takes the takes the advantage of enthalpy, uh, this apparent heat capacity method. Then they incorporate in this module, okay, and they come up with some uh, nice uh, equations, okay, and they discretize using this uh, finite difference method or uh, finite volume method or finite element method. So now this was all about uh, pure material. Now when we go to the impure, first one will, I will start from the very basic definition uh, or very basic uh, uh, understanding of this iron carbon diagram which will tell you that means unless you go to this eutectic composition, whatever the composition you take, you will have the liquidus temperature. Uh, this is solidus temperature and you have the liquidus temperature and uh, within this you can calculate the composition <coughs> using the lever rule. So I am not very uh, going through this lever rule, uh, means this is already known to you but uh, for a given uh, temperature uh, okay, and this uh, initial concentration you can calculate the concentration of solid or concentration of alpha phase, concentration of beta phase. Okay. Again, this subject is very uh, big and it's a full semester course actually. So some example I have noted down that if some initial concentration is given, how you can find uh, the solid uh, concentration of two phases basically from the, uh, the lever rule. However, I want to just go into some uh, new analytical model again for this impure material, okay. Here, you, we, we should understand one thing, here the composition of the material is known, okay. Uh, sometimes it is not known that I will describe how to model them. Okay, initially the, this is content, concentration is known, then through new analytical solution actually you can calculate the temperature distribution as well as concentration distribution, okay, using suitable boundary condition. So temperature, whatever you will get, again it is basically a stiffened problem, additionally what you are doing is you are solving the composition basically. Now, now the question arises, some material you don't know the composition, something like paraffin. Paraffin is a mixture of hydrocarbons. So how you will simulate the phase change? So what we do is that, uh, the similar way we write the equation phi and theta, only thing what we do, we write this H or latent heat variation with respect to temperature, okay. So here, here what people have done is that they have actually, this is actually that uh, expression where phi is nothing, uh, phi is expressed in this form. Phi is, is basically non-dimensionalized enthalpy parameter whereas theta is the, the non-dimensionalized temperature parameter. Now depending on the material, they actually vary the uh, exponent. However, again I am trying to say is that if you know the concentration, you have to solve the concentration equation. However, if you don't have concentration equation, then you can go, go through this route where you have to know the age versus uh, temp temperature. Basically, enthalpy versus temperature. 
So, 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 uh, so uh, then if you solve this equation, this is governed. So, if you solve this equation and then you do some uh, solve through another uh, 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 numerical model, they, you can show that that uh, that uh, profile is coming very well. This interface profile will come very well. So, this is a basic again uh, enthalpy method for impure material. However, we can actually extend that uh, this concept to our advanced enthalpy method, where the only the in, that uh, that uh, that uh, enthalpy update term will be will be will be uh, will be will be will be used by this expression, or will be uh, calculated through this expression. Earlier, if you see, if you just put this T solid as equal to T liquid as equal to T melt, then you will actually get back the original equation. However, when you are uh, using the impure metal, then or impure material, then you have to use a big expression. Now, once I understand this, uh, all this technique, then we will apply to various applications. One first one is electronic cooling application, where this is a heat sink within which actually phase change material is poured. Okay. Now, uh, heat is transferred from bottom where the chip is sitting. Okay. This, uh, this heat sink is placed on the uh, chip basically. So, now uh, during means it melts during, uh, to, and absorbs the energy. Uh, or absorb the heat as latent heat and stabilize the temperature of the chip. Okay. So, this is some of the, the temperature distribution in the domain which I have draw, uh, which I we have uh, analyzed and next uh, important nowadays is energy uh, that is a important uh, um, uh, 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 application. So, you can also use this phase change material as, uh, as thermal energy storage material. So, why we need thermal storage in our solar thermal power plant is that to stabilize the uh, power output from the turbine. Okay. So, here we can install this thermal energy storage. This can be in the form of sensible heat, it can be in the form of latent heat or it can, it can be in the form of the chemical, thermochemical storage. Okay. So, here we are applying the latent heat. So, it has certain advantage, uh, but it has also disadvantage. The phase change material uh, has very low thermal conductivity. So, in order to overcome that, there are various techniques we adopt. One is fin. Uh, this is longitudinal fin, this is uh, uh, the, the, again the um, annular fin and this is metal matrix and also there is one more famous thing is that packed bed type of thermal energy storage. Okay. So, we actually analyze that and try to figure out that uh, uh, this uh, uh, thermal energy storage, how it can be useful in minimizing the flood, uh, minimizing the fluctuations in the heat transfer fluid. Okay. So, compared to the uh, sensible heat storage. So, you can also employ those techniques to find out the dynamic, dynamic nature of the power plant also. And also then one more example with metal matrix, very recently we have developed that and then uh, basically we showed that the first law of thermodynamics uh, are been very well. Uh, not 25 percent, but this is just for representation. Uh, so, something it will go to 80 percent. And some of this uh, uh, application is in also thermal storage, but in the form of packed bed analysis. This is very much packed bed analysis is very much famous in the chemi chemical engineering. So, they used to do this very regularly. However, what, what, what is the advantage in our case is that we put phase change material in these particles and try to see that how the temperature is stabilized or heat transfer fluid temperature is stabilized at the outlet. So, we got uh, uh, very nice result with this type of thermal storage and uh, thank you. So, these are the contributors, these are my students who did all this work. So, thank you Professor Sandeep for the talk and we can have some questions now from the audience. You had a question, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, when you started your talk, right, you talked about the uh, ice melting. Yes, yes. Right? So, how does this relate to it? So, ice melting. So, ice is also a festive material. Yes, no, I understand. But when you, your, your classical Stefan 
problem yes is one dimensional initially started with one dimensional then we have uh, gone to two dimension then three dimension so okay. stephen actually solved this equation analytically yes okay so but when the system complicates when the shape complicates and phase change material complicates then we have to do some numerical analysis so it's a basically improvisation of that stephen equations basically all around yes any other question Hello, I'm Amrish Koth from Cummins. So my question is, uh, whenever you have, uh, let's say, uh, one op body, uh, closed container or other, and uh, there is a ice formation. So with this method, uh, ice to liquid phase change, we are already able to capture. Yes, yes. But uh, there is a chances uh, of the pressure rise. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So in that application, uh, what we need to add Okay. Terms. Uh, see, big pressure uh, uh, in the sense that vapor pressure increase actually. So because of this phase change means there is a shrinkage and expansion. Right. Because of that, whatever the vapor pressure will be there in the container, it may increase or it may decrease. Okay. So that can also be calculated because this is a only porosity model formulation, right? So there is no uh, effect of the no, specific volume. You. Yeah, let me tell you. So right now, whatever the formulation I showed you is where there we are assuming there is no actually expansion and sinkage. Okay. So Rubens density is same for solid and liquid. Now when density is different for solid and liquid, okay. So there is again um, means uh, you have to basically derive this equation for that, which I haven't shown, but recent one of my papers we have put that okay where we showed that sinkage and uh, expansion if you uh, if you are able to then say capture then you can actually predict more phenomena so but again means pressure uh, vapor pressure nobody has done till now and this is actually a little bit complicated okay. not a little bit it's a fully complicated thing <laughs> yeah that was my interest too uh, yes and uh, you means we haven't gone to that extent till uh, because then you have to use say for example you have to use this enthalpy porosity method now in order to capture that also you need volume of fluid method and uh, the again you have to solve the neve stokes equation that in that uh, vapor pressure zone also means it's a complicated way just to give you one example this uh, 30, 60 20, 25 into 25 into 25 mm dimension one cube uh, if you want to simulate this process in computer, it will take uh, 20, 48 hours. So now you see that if you incorporate all these things, it will take longer time. Thank you. So if there are no further questions, further questions then let's thank the speaker once again for his very, very interesting talk.